action. I love it. Thank you. Don't know if we need it, but like it. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Great right. to see you. Before we get going, a yep. little bit of housekeeping. Go on then. What do you mean, uh, sort the toilets out and maybe bake a pie? <laughs> what, what, what are you on about housekeeping? No. Before we start any of the podcasts, there's going to be a little bit of something at the yep. beginning, rather than Jason talking about toilets or pies or, or whatever. Yeah. We could be talking about your product. Oh. You know, like if you make hats... We could talk about hats. Yeah. If you if you make snacks, we could be talking about your snacks. We could be dancing your tune. So if you do happen to be the CEO of a major tech brand, or if you just fancy using our fast growing platform oh. uh, to promote your product through the medium of sponsorship, yes, get in touch and we'll get you know our people to talk. We to haven't your got any people. Don't we've, believe her. We've got my dad. Is your dad still running things? The Don. Okay. Yeah, Tony. Oh. We'll get Tony to speak to your people. Yeah. And we'll get it all sorted. He's not doing deals. He's always doing with deals. the wrong people. Well, you know, he has been involved with yeah. you know, the family. What's that show? I'm, I'm so rubbish. I've not had enough coffee. Sopranos? No, the one that was set in Digbeth. And I'm not even joking this time. Oh, uh, what? The Peaky Blinders? Yeah. Was he a Peaky yeah. Blinder? Well, he's not that old, Jace. Oh, fair enough. Okay. And we'll, anyway, yeah. we'll get them to talk and we'll all get into bed together. I'm sorry? Yeah, I, you know, I don't write the opinion. I'm just reading it. Okay, fair enough. Run the titles. Actually, there's no one here. We better do it ourselves. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Gadget Show podcast with me, Susie Perry. Oh, oh. Ah, and me. Uh, well, the other one. This week, we've got a very special guest uh, with an amazing story who Jason honestly loves. Well, that's very, very true. You're right. Um, I do truly love him with all my heart. And, and I'm not even and joking. And I've loved him, but never met him before. <sighs> Exciting. But before we get into that intriguing thing, or, you know, whatever it is, whatever it becomes, yeah. we're going to do some interaction with you, the lovely people that we're making this podcast for. Yeah, we are constantly genuinely blown away by your kind messages and support for this new podcast project thingy that we're up to. Uh, and so we've, uh, well, I've picked out a few messages oh, at random. Good. Yeah, okay. Just, just, just whatever came up in front of me, I chose it. Are you ready? Yeah. This one's from Simon Marks, who is, of course, the lead singer of the band Lost Without Cause. Oh, I love them. <laughs> I love that. Too. And he says, so glad you guys are back. Huge fan of Jason. Right. And then uh, Miss Lady Luna writes, Jason was always my favourite. Love that he's back. Just obviously just picked a few at random. Here's one from Jake Schroff. Uh, hi, Jake. Good to see you. Uh, I see Jason in Nuki all the time in summer filming stuff. He's a great bloke. Um, you're just picking the ones out about you, aren't you? There might have been some, some editing. I mean, I, 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 I put a long list. I might have... Were there any about me or th um, us or, you know, just generally? I think there are. There's uh, Sean AJ, who's talking about you, Susie. Oh, yeah, come on. He says, she's beautiful with a love heart emoji, Suze. Oh, that's lovely. But I was kind of hoping for a bit more. She's a great presenter. They're great together. The, the presentation's so good. Well, he, he does the add a bit on the end. Oh, does he? He says, and Jason is awesome. Thanks. Uh, right. Thank you, mate. Thank I you very, very much. Sean, good that's man. That's enough. Of that yeah. now, Mr. Bradbury, and your self editing, <laughs> you narcissist. Let's move on and have a look at some tech, shall we? According oh. to my screen here, yep. I need to ask you a very important question. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Is the console dead? Wow. Wow. You do have a habit of targeting the, the big question of the day. That is such a timely question, and I don't know, but I'm guessing that we're going to investigate that huge concept on today's episode. So, look, if the console is dead, and that's a big if... It's a massive if. What's replacing? Well, uh, clearly, I think it, we're talking about the portable gaming market. That mm -hmm. would seem to be, from the data, where things are headed. And I think it's because there's a coming together, isn't there, of, of various key, uh, key themes. So one is uh, the success for all the major players, like uh, Steam, who make the Steam Deck, uh, Sony, Xbox, they, they're all uh, offering really good high-performance cloud-based gaming services. And is it the fact that the cloud-based that's making the difference because we've now got a bandwidth that can keep up? Massively important that you have enough bandwidth with technologies like 5G and obviously Wi-Fi and you know gigabit this, that and the other and all, all the sorts of uh, key ways of transferring data that you need to support something on the go. But also, there's a miniaturization, as you know, that continues... Well, since... Smaller, lighter, more powerful, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Since Moore, the founder of Intel, predicted it in the 60s, 
that exponential doubling thing. Well, we've got to the point now where we're so far up the curve mm. that, uh, as you know, you can get incredible performance. I mean, this thing's got an AMD processor in it. Um, and it's, it's so got... So Jace is holding up the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck. It's also got... Um, a solid state hard drive, a really high performing hard drive. It's got one terabyte in it, right? Wow. Seven inch screen, all right? This is the LCD version, but there is an OLED version, which is a little bit bigger. I think it's 7.2 inches. This is seven inches. And that one, if you want to get geeky, is 90 hertz. This is 60 hertz. This is, these are all important innovations. And that's happened almost within a year of the first one coming out, or within, certainly within two years. So the evolution of the hardware is also happening at an exponential rate. And so you've got all these things coming together in a kind of crossroads. And so now we're at a point where the portable gaming console is taking on the big hardware. So am I right in thinking that at the moment it was pretty much 50-50, but perhaps the bigger console is stagnating a little bit? I think it is. And there's also, there's, I mean, this has been going for a while, but there's a lot of rumours about Xbox releasing a handheld console. And I'll tell you why I think that's a thing. In the way that the Vision Pro, which if you remember, we yep. started this podcast project uh, with a fantastic review, um, in the same way that that was almost predictable because they were doing so much with augmented reality on the iPhone and all that sort of stuff and, and the miniaturization of their, their famous chipset. The same's happening with Xbox, actually, and that they've, they've pushed so much money and resources into their cloud gaming service, Game Pass, that they almost have to do a handheld console because if they don't everyone else is going to just mop it up like i can i can access xbox games on this device would you believe so i can give i, I can access the steam steam game game so there is a cloud dimension to this i've got most of them on on the hard drive actually because i you know online cloud gaming is still a little bit dodgy it depends if you've got full 5g on your on your you know let's say your, your smartphone and you're mm. sat in a cafe then great but if you are on the go it can be a bit sketchy it can and if you're trying to play at a really competitive level then th that latency is really important but all of that stuff if <laughs> it's so funny because all of that stuff will evolve and will be no problem eventually the bandwidth will be instant real-time virtually zero latency and that's when the handheld market will suddenly overtake consoles there'll be no point there will be no point in having a, a big box a black box like the xbox for example or a ps5 a nice big white tower there'll be no point it will just be a it will be almost funny to look at like my my 14 year old my youngest child will look at those devices and laugh at them because they'll just look like old steam engines you know Right, let's have a little chat about this. This is the Nintendo Switch, the market yeah. leader in the portable console market. Yeah. 137 million of these bad boys sold. Unbelievable. Let's talk about these a little bit while I play. <laughs> okay, so, well, yeah. Um, so the, the offering from Nintendo is always that lovely sort of cutesy... It's not always, but, but in general Generally. terms, it's that Japanese gamer market that is just so, you know, so hugely popular with a wide demographic of gamers. So not traditional first person shooter esports players but you know a broader a broader swathe yeah of i mean anyone can pick this up and just start playing can't they really absolutely and it's brilliant and of course as you know because we were on the cutting edge of all this you remember when you uh, blew my mind with the we yeah oh yeah. yeah jason it's Suze. yeah can you come down to the studio they want you to come down here immediately Gosh. oh no i don't believe that <laughs> i i am <laughs> Gosh, it's, just, it's just beautiful. Look at the controller. The president of Nintendo had to say it was okay for us to actually have it here. Wow. I was going to say, do so you remember when you blew, blew my mind with your Wii? Yeah. But that wouldn't have... I think people know something else. what you're talking about there. Because do you remember when I drank, drank your my Wii? Wii. Yeah. Is that liquid? Yeah. That's from Jace. <laughs> all right. Um, this incredible device, in all seriousness, <laughs> should be able to filter urine. Susie Perry! What do you think? It doesn't taste of weight, but it is still warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, and no one asked you to do that. Well, you say that, but you know when the camera's rolling? Oh. And I thought you came in and you said, oh, I'm parched. <laughs> <laughs> Susie! Let me just explain. We were in the desert and we were testing a gadget that was supposed to filter water. So we thought the ultimate way to filter water, see if it were, would be to wee in a little vial and then filter it. And then <laughs> but you thought it was a pint of shandy. I thought, well, if it works, because they told me that it definitely works, yeah. if I drink this now, it will taste like water. But do you know what it tasted like? <laughs> can I guess? Yes. Wee. Asparagus wee. So the thing is, can I just say, 
I love that about you. I love it about you. I'm sure you're the same. Always up for it. I think there's a name for people that do that, but let's move on. I think there was, there was a, a part of the, web, of the internet dedicated to that. <laughs> um, what were we saying? Why are we? Oh, yeah, the Wii, the Nintendo Wii. So you um, very generously surprised me with, and people should know that those things where we were surprised on the gadget show, Gen- people went to great lengths. Yeah, genuine. To make it genuine. Blew my mind. Wasn't it like the first in the country? I mean, it was so exclusive. Yeah, 100%. We were the first people to get it in the UK. Oh, I love it. And it was an absolute revelation. Well, well it's all the sensors, wasn't it? That, yeah. that kind of blew us away to start Absolutely with. Absolutely mind blowing. What the Switch does is, of course, it uses the, you know, again, we're back to this exp- exponential curve. It uses the latest technology to enable you to do effectively the same thing. And so at the weekend, there was I with my daughter jumping about playing tennis and, and volleyball. Yeah. Yeah, no surprise that it's the, the market leader because it's so... It, it, and you can do your Fortnite on it and your, your, you know, your first-person shooters. Yeah. Not, the, not the best platform for them, but you can do that. But you could start out in that sort of realm with yeah. that, couldn't you? It's such a versatile device. Switch 2? Of course, rumours abound that they are about to uh, innovate yet again, build on the success of this physical family-friendly device where you can jump about and dance and you can play tennis and sword fighting and all the other sorts of Wii Sport type games, which are now Switch Sports, I guess. Um, And uh, yeah, they've gone through various iterations. When was it first out, the Switch? 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? So yeah, it's about time, isn't it, that they brought out a new piece of hardware, which I'm guessing will be, you know, it'll have a a high resolution screen. Uh, It'll have maybe a cloud-based service. I don't know. Um, People that know about Nintendo would be much better suited to predicting this. In fact, give us your predictions in comments. I guess the best way to do it is on X for the Gadget Show's... um, Yeah. Twitter profile. Um, but but yes, Switch 2, where it's going hardware-wise, I don't know. Are they going to move into the VR realm? Is it going to be something you can slot into a helmet? I don't know. And then we've got these phones, these miniature, you know, high-performance computers in the back of our pocket that have graphics processors on them. You can get devices like the Game Sir. I think it's called the X2 and, and the Backbone and, and, and myriad other devices that clip around your phone mm. and turn it into something a bit like a ton of a small Steam Deck. So basically your phone becomes the screen and all the buttons you need are all around it. Yep. So it's an extension of your phone, effectively. It's all there in your hands. And when you've got that, why do you need a hulking great big black Xbox or bright white PS5 tower. That, so that's why the uh, dominance of the console that we've grown up with, we were the first generation of console owners, you and I. 1979 was the Atari 2600, and it moved up from there. Now we're at the, the point in our evolution where the console may well not make sense. What about the PlayStation Portal? Great question, because it, that to me points to the variety in this space. So they've done something that's different again. So all of the advertising for PlayStation Portal effectively said you can use this miniature device, which again is like a white, sexy looking version of a Steam Deck or, or, or a Switch, if you like. And again, it's different in that you, you, you get your best performance within your own home Wi-Fi network, mm. right? Um, but you can be on the bus and you can use your 5G hookup and you can connect to your PlayStation 5 at home, your PS5 at home. But again, it's very unusual. It's, I, I think it's, it's very niche. It's very much for the hardcore. Unless, of course, they open it up. Right. They open it up, which they can always do because it's ultimately a software, you know, it's an update, isn't it? So the portal, you don't think it's going to steal the crown of Switch or Steam Deck or no, the like? I, I, and I don't think it's intended to. It's a bit of a weird one, really. Again, I've got a friend of mine and he's a real PlayStation advocate and he's got one and he loves it. But even he understands it's a very niche product. No, I would say that the likes of, of Switch, obviously, but more to the point Steam Deck because it's more of a PC gaming platform. Yeah. Mm. Uh, or Lenovo's Legion Go. That's another really, that's a sexy piece of hardware, much more powerful than the Steam Deck. And uh, what's the other one by Zeus? Uh, the um, ROG Ally. That's another stunning piece of kit. Razer have got one. This is a big market, Susie. There's loads of them. But but I wonder, I, I don't know, I'm just going to jump in because something that's quite sexy to tell you. Steam have, for a long time, Valve, have been working on a secret project and they call it Deckard. Oh, yeah. Of course, Deckard is the character from Blade Runner, isn't he? He's the detective right. played by Harrison Ford. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we suspect that it's a virtual reality helmet. 
effectively a steam oh. deck that you wear on your face. So again, here's what I predict. I could be completely wrong like most of my other predictions. Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to see is slow down in the console market. Financially, the financials for the gaming PC handheld market are going to overtake uh, the, de uh, the, the console. Um, and potentially even gaming PCs, although I've predicted the demise of gaming PCs before, and I'm so wrong about that. And we're going to move through handhelds, and then we're going to come out the other end, and we're going to be wearing them on our face. Wow. Right, so back to the original question that I asked you with yep. the fanfare. Is the console dead? Uh, it's not, is it really? It's that quote, isn't it? Uh, reports of my death are greatly exaggerated or whatever the quote is um i think we're at a pivotal point i don't think we're there yet and i definitely wouldn't call it because the tech space has a way of uh, confounding predictions but i'm going to put my head on the block because it's fun and it'll generate comments slag me off if you want on our, on our x uh, which is gadget show uh, or wherever you want to find us i'm going to say we're we're starting to see the turn happening because the, the forces of, of exponential evolution are coming together, the cloud-based services are all sort of, the clouds are aligning, let's say that, in every sense of the phrase cloud, and I think we could start to see that. So I'm going to say yes, but that process is starting, that conversion is happening. If you disagree, the beauty of this podcast is we actually want to know. Um, yeah, actually, let us know yeah. what you think. Let us know your thoughts, because I think yeah. that the globe, actually talking about the world, I think that plays a big part in where this is going to go. What, in terms of what's happening in Asia? Like, well, it, yeah. a, a, there's a third of the market right there, Yeah, you know, and, uh, and the States. Yeah, no, that is, that is fascinating. Some of the demographics are absolutely amazing. If you told me, as I sat there on my Shagpal carpet, uh, in my G, next to my G-Plan uh, and my VHS, and I was playing on my Atari 2600, I was playing... Uh, you know on your VHS, <laughs> did you have Command. to press down the two buttons to record? Yes! Yes! If you told me then yeah. what we'd be doing now, not just how the games look, but how we'd be playing them. I mean, you've got to admit, that Steam Deck that you just had a fondle with there, mm. that's mm. a beautiful piece of industrial design. And I use fondle on purpose. Yeah. It's, all, it's quite sensual, isn't it? Mm. The design of it. And that's not by accident. If you told me that's where we'd be, oh my God, I would have, I would have not believed you. So, so saying that the console could well be on the way out is not as radical as it might seem because so much other crazy stuff has happened. Right, it's time for our guest on this week's podcast. And for this, I think, Jason, because you love him so much, yes. you should introduce our guest. I would like to introduce to the Gadget Show podcast audience my son, Jackson Bradbury, a.k.a. Rez Hex. What's up, guys? Rez Hex? That was so cool! <laughs> You're so cool, bro! <laughs> so why have we got your son, Jackson Bradbury, on the show today? Pa part nepotism. Right? Yeah, but so other, the majority. Other part, he's a professional gamer. At the age of sixteen, his job is is gaming. Jackson, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Professional gamer at sixteen. How long have you been a professional gamer for? Full time gaming. I've been gaming for around four years, but prop like properly doing well. I joined uh, esports team around n nearly two years now. So two years is when it's properly been serious. God, I want to say to you, let me take you back to your childhood. That's my, my son over there. But I you are still in your childhood at 16. Jace? Sorry, sit. carry be, on. Be carry pro, on. be a pro. Um, how did all this happen? Now, I'm thinking when you were born, you got put into some sort of drawer <laughs> with lots of gadgets and technical devices, and that is now why you're a gamer. Essentially, is that what's happened with your dad? So pretty much, like, we just, in our old house, we had an attic in our roof with, like, consoles in there. Uh, we had like bean bags that we just played games on with our friends when, whenever they were around. And yeah, that's just how it started, really. I mean, that's one thing. I mean, everybody watching this that used to watch a gadget show knows how much your dad was into gaming. And that's sort of a given, I would think, that your kids would grow up, you know, oh, loving gadgets. All three of them, yeah. But to become a professional gamer, that is something very, very different. So, how did that happen? And when did you know? just how good Jackson was then. Obviously, every kid reckons that they're going to, nowadays, they're going to be a YouTuber and they're, gonna, and they're brilliant at, at gaming, right? Yeah. 
Uh, and the game in question is, of course, Fortnite. We'll get to that in a second. But so many young people or people watching that have got youngsters in their lives will know that Fortnite is this massive game uh, enjoyed by 500 million people worldwide. And that was Jackson's game of choice. He, he, he played lots of different games, but that was the one. And, of course, he said, I'm going to be... I'm going to be a professional gamer when I grow up. Right. And obviously, like most parents, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good lad, you go for that. But not really taking him seriously. Um, and, and I didn't take him seriously, if I'm honest. I knew he was pretty handy at it until we were in the car on the way up to a massive gaming festival called Insomnia. Which oh, yeah. Many, yeah. yeah, many listeners will know. Yeah, I know you're aware of it. Happens locally, doesn't it, the NEC. And it's called Insomnia because the idea is that you never sleep because they actually camp in tents... In one of the halls. It's amazing. And they come with these trolleys and they've got the PCs or the consoles and they've got the whole gang. And it's also an expo as well. And they do all kinds of competitions. And we're driving along. And you're, what, you're going to do like a little job there or something, are you? I was doing a, I was doing a show there, actually. Mm. I was doing a show on stage. And, uh, and I'd invited Jackson to come up because he loves gaming. He's going to come with us. And uh, he said, Dad, uh, Team XL are going to be there. And I sort of went, oh, cool, yeah. Not knowing what he was on about. Right. It's an esports team. And uh, Wolfies is going to be there. Who? Oh, yeah. Wolf Wolfies. Wolfies. Who's Wolfies? He was the best player in the world. Uh, he recently quit um, due to like wrist injuries, which happens a lot in gaming. But uh, he got second place in the World Cup, which he won 1.3 million, I think it was. What? Yeah. <laughs> the second as well. What? He said Wolfies is going to be there. Yeah. Apparently there's a competition. And if I get through to the final on Sunday uh, and I beat Wolfies... Then I get a prize. And I was like, yeah, you go for it, son. As I was kind of like listening to my podcast or whatever. Not taking it seriously. Then what happened? Uh, so then we played some tournament. Uh, it was against um, like five other people. It was, and over three, it was over three days. Yeah. And okay. you got into the final. Yeah. Uh, and then in the finals, we played, is it called Zone Wars? And we played against each other. Wolfies was playing um, and I won the whole thing. Uh, so I won a pair of trainers, like custom trainers by XL, which was cool. Um, and then as a little bonus, I got signed to the team. It's a, a little bonus. Hang on a minute. <laughs> they always, they always jump to the punchline, these yeah, youngsters. Absolutely jump forward there. So hang on a minute. So you're there, you're at the NEC, you, you, you've entered this competition to play essentially what, the world champion, let's say, yeah. um, of Fortnite. And were you nervous? Were you, you know, how did you feel going into this? I was a little bit nervous. I didn't really know how I'd do. But, He's 14 uh, at this yeah, time, by the way. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Shut up. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Edit that bit out. <laughs> yeah, so a bit nervous. And, and, but what happened? Like, as soon as you get into it, that gives you the confidence? Yeah, to be honest, I just I play the game every day. Played the game every day. Um, so I was, like, just used to it. I was just playing. And... Um, yeah, I managed to beat him. And so he's on stage somewhere else in the NEC, Not in another hall. Not taking it seriously at all. Yeah. No. You, so how, what, what point did you know that he was knocking it out okay, of the ballpark? Okay, here's the thing, actually. This is, this is interesting. G great question. I was on a stand where they had the first Steam Deck. Oh, that, really? Yeah, and I, and I hadn't had mine delivered yet. And I was playing the Steam Deck, and I looked at my phone. Being, being an attentive dad, there were like 17 messages that had come in over the last two hours that I'd ignored. And they were like, Dad, get to get Team XL. I'm in the final. I made the final. You must come to the stand. So I went there. And obviously, I'm quite... Look, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to bear my soul with you, right? You, right. I'm quite used to going to these places and being the big I am. And everyone getting excited. It's the guy from the Gadget Show and all that. So I went along there with yeah. my swagger, yeah? You were giving it the whole, uh, look yeah. at me, check me out. And literally, I watched the last few moments, I filmed it actually, I filmed the whole process, as he beat Wolfies. And I stood there, the, the cameras came in, the crowd came in, and I was literally squeezed to the back. And no one was in... <laughs> No one was interested. You're like, that's me. No, hello, hello. <laughs> Why are the cameras pointing the guy? You pointed the cameras the wrong way. They swept him up. He did interviews. He got these, and these trainers weren't any small deal. They were custom done by an artist to his exact, with his logo on it. And then, anyway, long story short, four days later, I got a phone call, and it was a, it was the guy that would ultimately become his manager, a guy called Freeman, lovely guy, at what was then Team XL. It's now called. Uh, uh, Giant X, because they've merged with a Spanish team. These, they're great. They're, they're, their offices are in Shoreditch. I mean, these are big deals. He's sponsored by JD Sports and, uh, you know, uh, Burger King, EE. This is not a small deal. Mm. They said, we want to sign your son, but he's the youngest guy we've ever signed. And we had to talk to the local council about, and it was, he did a contract effectively like a, like a West End kid like a West End performer, like an actor type thing. And, we, and he had to, we had to inform his school and everything. Oh, wow. 
And then it started. And then that's two years ago. Okay. And, yeah. Can you please pass the mic back to Jackson? I'll be over here if you need me, though, okay, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You just sit there. <laughs> Quietly. Be quiet. Sorry, quiet. How much of your day spent playing? Uh, okay, so pretty much I wake up, 9 o'clock, uh, breakfast, straight on Fortnite, and then around 1 o'clock I do some content because I make content on TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and then... He's got his own editor. <laughs> He's got his own TikTok <laughs> editor. Oh, sh stop, stop. Uh, Just over here if you need any uh, assistance. Sit there. Sorry. Go and sit in the corner. Sorry. Just for a minute, sit there. Simbin. Go on. Uh, and then literally the rest of the day, I play Fortnite and I stream it to, uh, on Twitch as well to um, my community. Uh, and yeah, that's literally the whole day. I play till like 12 o'clock at night and then I go to bed and then... 100,000 yeah, followers, thank you. <laughs> I don't know whose idea this was. <laughs> um, so you, you, you go, basically... I promise not to talk, can I sit? Cause yes, it's but just... My back. Can you just... Thank you. So you all day... So what is your job for the team then? Is, it, is that to make content for the team? Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm signed to make content for the team. And um, I just make content around Fortnite, just like updates about it, the game, uh, like tournament, like how, I've, like how I've done in tournaments, stuff like that. Um, videos of me getting some kills like are really cool and stuff yeah just crazy stuff and can i ask you a personal question yep. which might seem a, a bit gauche but i know a lot of people out there would be going well what what does that generate in terms i of don't know what that means either by the way Jax. it's in, french in, ter in terms of income what do you get paid you know if if so like how much do you get paid if you don't <laughs> mind sharing it with us so i get i get paid by my org a salary each month i get paid a certain amount and then uh, you can, I earn money through tournaments as well. So there's different tournaments in Fortnite. So there's the big one, which is coming up uh, in literally Friday. So I've got to get practicing for that. Um, and that is 7.7 7 million, I think, what? prize pool. So yeah. <laughs> no wonder. No now one, you see. No, no wonder he's connects. smiling. No wonder you're smiling. Do you need a, co you need a coffee or anything, son? <laughs> no, yeah. good. This, how has this turned out you for you, <laughs> honestly? Really? I, in all but, seriousness, I, I, no, I love it because, because it, it, it is, it, he is living, I'm living vicariously through him. You know, that, that. We all are now. Yeah. So, so what are the chances, though, that you could win that tournament? Uh, so, it, so it's 50 teams, so 100 people, uh, 50 duos um, qualify into, into the grand finals, which you've got to make it through like four stages to get into. Uh, so there's open, semifinals, and then finals. Um, it takes place in an arena, Susie. Yeah. With, with like, you know, 15,000 people yeah, watching, watching in the I, arena. I know it's full on. I've, I've, you know, having sort of been, spent a lot of time in Asia and stuff, I, I, I always blows my mind how they make it into such a massive event with people sitting there watching somebody playing effectively. Yeah. But I suppose it's like the old days of watching someone play chess, you know, as a comparison going back, far more exciting. So what's your setup at home then? What have you got? I mean, I can see here you've got what looks like a pretty expensive laptop, particularly for a 16 year old, but, all, <laughs> but just generally really. Yeah, so my laptop, uh, that's for, um, so when I travel, like, like I've just been away for the week, uh, I play on my laptop, I, it's got like the best specs. It's got a 4090 graphics card and like an, the newest i9 in it. Uh, so it's one of the best specs. And then at home, I have two PCs. So I have one so I can stream my tournaments without having any lag um, while I play tournaments and stuff like that. And then I have my main PC, which has like top specs. Um, that's what I game on. Then I have my main monitor, which is 240 Hertz, which is like the refresh rate you need to like have to, to basically play well. The refresh rates are a huge thing because if you're playing on 60 Hertz, you can't see stuff as well as you can on 240 Hertz. Um, and then you can't react as quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. reaction times are like the main thing because, uh, like, at I think the retirement age for gamers is like 22, 21. <gasps> that is insane, isn't it? You've, so got, got, you've, you've got six years to fund your father. Yeah. But this is you've got. Otherwise, you're out Other, on your own. Otherwise, it's I've told the shed. Him, you're back in the if draw. You, if you don't win, I, I don't love you anymore. I mean, that's a little bit harsh. Um, Possibly. Mm -hmm. That, that's not what I said, what I think, just in case you, that was a joke. But, um, but, but, no, but the, the thing I was going to say is, no, but I used to find it amazing that footballers were kind of finished at whatever, 35 or whatever it is. Oh, easily, yeah. yeah. And, and, but, and again, like the technology, the exponential rate of, of the, the humans are now being phased out earlier. 
based on the, the, the sort of digital nature of, what, of how they're competing, I think it's absolutely So in a, in a digital world, you've got to make your money early in this field because of, as yeah. you're talking about reactions, I mean, it, I can compare it to something I know a lot about, motorcycle races, obviously, the older you get, you know, the... the, the the walls get closer to you and your reactions get slower. I'm guessing it's whilst it's not as dangerous playing games, it's it is all about see and being able to focus. So so what do you think? You might not know the answer to this because you probably just do it, but what is it that enables you to focus hundred percent on on what you're doing? How immersive is your is your setup and how important is that immersion? Um so when I when I'm playing to like keep myself locked into the game, I turn off my left monitor so I can't see anything on that. And it just kind of locks me in. And you got, they got something called flow state. And, you, and when you get into that, and that's like your best state in a tournament. So you're playing your best. Uh, you, yeah, and that's, that's when, um, that's when like every, no distractions, nothing. You just locked in. And that's, how, that's like when you perform in the grand finals and stuff like that. That's, that's like the key. So you know this flow state. Yeah. How, do you, how do you get yourself into it? Because you don't all, we don't always feel like you know, switching ourselves on to 100%. So do you have any help with that? Yeah, so I have um, two coaches. Um, I have... Two wait, coaches? Wait, sorry, is this right? Is no, go on, okay, yeah. Um, so I have two coaches. Uh, one is called Sven and one is called Pappy. Um, so Sven is my in-game coach. So he helps me with like, say I do something wrong. He tells me like, you did that bad, do this instead. So it's like um, the technical side of it. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, in Fortnite there's zones. So like there's a massive map and the zones make the make the map go smaller. There's like it's a storm and the storm will kill you if you're in it. So it slowly gets smaller and smaller. So you can't touch the zone. So you've got to rotate around the map. So a ro rotation device is where um, you have something like a grapple. So you like shoot it and it will pull you forward. But there's none of that in this season. So what he'll say is like, as soon as the zone closes, you need to run straight away to get into the next zone. So while you're playing, he's talking to you in your ear. Yeah. So okay. and he does offline coaching as well, like when we're not in a tournament, uh, where he'll just talk to us about new strategies and stuff like that. But yeah, live coaching, he'll be telling us like while we're in the tournament, what we, what to do in it. So he's kind of like, let's just um, let's let's relay that to like a football coach, for example. So you'll get tactics and everything from him beforehand, and you'll talk about what could possibly happen and what you should do. And then while you're playing, he's in your ear helping you. Yeah. So you're gonna you're having to split your brain and be in the flow st state yeah. to do really well. Yeah. And what about your other coach then? Uh, some other coaches like uh, on what's the his name? The Pappy. Side. Yeah, Pappy. Okay. <laughs> he's more on the mental side. So he's working on the more disciplined side and um, he makes me just like stick to a schedule. So I'm, so my brain is like more disciplined. So I'm working harder and harder. Um, but is there a point where, you know, because obviously you can't just keep on working, 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 working. Does, does he ever say to you, right, you need to chill out and go do something and relax? He says it to me or his mom. So he'll send us a text privately. Jackson doesn't know this. He, I'm not oh, really, okay. he doesn't know. Okay. But he'll say, look, I feel he's, he's too intense. He's been on it for seven days now. He's not been out. Or he's not done, you know, X, and uh, he'll encourage because of course we live in Cornwall. So he'll say mm. he, I need to go surfing, or he need, the phrase they use is touch grass, isn't it? Yeah, right. Keep yeah. your feet on the floor, reflectively <laughs> turf, yeah. just just to to do something human You're that's not looking at a screen. Correct, and he talks to his mom about because um, obviously my wife is a nutritional therapist, and yeah. so he'll say he'll ask what he's been eating because he, he'll notice patterns of behaviour. He's used to working with young people. He knows that they like sweet drinks and chocolate and all the rest of it. And he'll make sure that his, his intake is right. And I mean, it, it, a bit like the sport that you, yeah. that, you, that you understand, the sports stars that you work with, the same thing, anything that gives them an edge. See, this is probably uh, fascinating for me, and I'm sure it is for anybody listening, that you need to have the right nourishment, uh, the right amount of sleep, um, the right nutrients to, to be able to, play a game online yeah. and, it, and, and at this level is it about small percentages is it is it is it that that gets you to the top do you think yeah so say I didn't have any sleep on a, on a tournament night that I think sleep is one of my biggest factors in playing well or not because if I don't have sleep I play terrible mm. like there was one day I didn't have sleep I didn't even qualify for the easiest tournament it was it's like it's that detrimental I think it just slows your brain down and you just don't you don't think like you would on full sleep. A bit of a mom question, this possibly. Like, did you have any concerns when you realised how good Jackson was, and that obviously he would be going onto it full time in terms of just 
you know, getting out there and doing normal teenage things and stuff like that. You would think, knowing me like you do, and my love of gaming, that I would have been like, go, 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 son, gaming, gaming, gaming. But is that true? No. No, I, 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 I stepped outside myself as a dad and was very aware of the need for all of my kids to have a balanced mm. life and, and, and to foreground, you know, grass, real life interactions yeah. over digital ones. So actually it was a bit, I faced a bit of a challenge coming to terms with it. Me and Jax are into going to the gym, so we, we, we like to do that. And I'm, all, I'm always really, stop, I'm stopping him doing certain moves because I'm aware how easy it is even to have a kind of, moderate injury because especially now because now is the most important time of the year for Fortnite. Mm. Uh, in fact maybe jackson you'd like to tell susie why uh yeah like the tournament i was talking about earlier fnts so if you make it to the grand finals then that is a qualifier to the globals so the globals will be in september at dallas um so you get flown out everything like that if you qualify so this, this time you have to get top five in the grand finals to qualify to the globals. And then in two months, it's top 10 uh, in the grand finals to qualify. So that's what I'm aiming for, the top 10. Because it's, uh, it's, yeah, because I have time and I, w I just need to perfect more stuff and just become a better player. And is, is that your dream? Yeah, yeah. Jackson Bradbury, thank you so much. It's been really fascinating talking to you. I can't wait to see what happens. So good luck with the qualification for FNCS. And if you get through to the final in Dallas, what do you, what? I think we should go with him, do you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was just going to say. We yeah. should do a special podcast yeah. and follow you and all go to Dallas. Yeah, no Obviously. pressure, son. No. So <laughs> we're all coming with you. No, yeah, we'll, we'll be quiet. I'll keep him out of the way. Yep. Unless you want him to service anything or sort anything out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, exactly. I'll do the coffees. I can okay. do that bit. Yeah. But yeah, and until then, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know how you managed to create somebody so intelligent. Before we go, I just want to give a little bit of love to this absolute beauty. So oh. what I'm looking at now and what I'm touching and sliding my hands down is a quarter arcade game, Space Invaders quarter because it's the quarter of the size of the arcade games that we used to play in the 70s and 80s. Oh, this brilliant. is Space Invaders, but it's exactly, it's identical to the bits on the top, the little little sticker on the front. That sticker and on the front of that Space Invaders is circa 1970 whatever. Yeah. It, exactly like exactly. that. Exactly. So if you used to play this, if you used to play Space Invaders, you will love this. It's by Numskull. They make a few of them actually, Jay, so as, you, as you well know. But what's brilliant about it is the screen. It, yeah. It's so beautiful. And you know why, don't you? Because the graphics. It's because of the um, Pepper's Ghost thing. Oh, yes, it is. Just explain that. On the original, um, the CRT or the cathode ray tube screen, which you'll remember the great big lumps of TVs we had in the house, well, these were the same. But rather than you playing the, the machine and that screen being you know, orientated towards you on the Space Invaders, it was situated in the bottom of the cab, looking up. Yeah. And then they had a Pepper's Ghost Piece of glass, is it 45 degrees? Mm. And then they put graphics on the glass so that you've got a kind of almost three dimensional uh, screen with a bit of colour on it. That, yeah. That's the idea. That was the it? feeling of it, wasn't it? Yes. And that's what you get with this. Yes, as they've well. done it in, the, exactly the, in the pretend one. Yeah. Love it. I'll tell you what is brilliant about this range as well is that they also do, and, and you'll think I'm making this up, carpet. What do they do carpet for? So that you can make your own miniature arcade. And they do little stools and a bin. <laughs> And like a Pepsi machine that functions as a USB charger for the actual games. And on that retro note, oh, it is a that's retro all we've note, got time for. Isn't it? And I almost don't want to finish. I've loved every second of this, sitting here with you, your superstar. Like, what? Absolutely brilliant. No, I've loved it. It's been absolutely smashing. I've really, really enjoyed it. And if you've enjoyed it yeah. a lot, then I've got news <laughs> for you. If you can't wait for the next episode of the Gadget Show podcast with uh, Susie and Jason, then you need to be a Patreon sub. Yeah, because right? you can watch it right now. You can see it right now. If you've not already signed up to Patreon, it's available for you to watch. A, is it a week early? Yep. I think it is. Uh, and there's also other kind of benefits Loads and stuff. of other content. Behind the scenes like footage. Yep. 
exclusive videos that we do, stuff that maybe we don't, doesn't make into the edit, you can see that too. And you can also come along here as well if you that's sign the, up for the top tier. Yeah, that's the max tier, and you're right to bring it up, Susie, because uh, that means you can actually sit inside the studio, you can hang out with us and chat to us. Uh, we'll, give you, we'll show you lots of love. And it's really, really important because it's one of the ways that we're funding this project and we want it to continue. Yeah, be part of the gang. And another way of being part of the gang is let us know exactly what you'd like to cover. So if you've seen a fantastic gadget or some technology, yeah. you'd like to know more about it, tell us, let us know on X, Facebook, wherever. Yeah, whatever, your whatever it's called is. now. Just send us a message and we'll have a look at it for you. All right. See you soon. See you later. The Gadget Show podcast with Jason and Susie was presented by Jason Bradbury and Susie Perry off the telly. It was produced by Ewan Keel and Tom Clint and is a North One production.